How you going there Photoshoppers and welcome to another video tutorial. As you can see here we're going to be putting together this beautiful shot. It's taken down at the Skill Inn on the central coast of New South Wales in Australia. We used a technique of shutter blending for this one. Blended about two or three photos in the foreground for the water and also a nice sky taken on the same morning. We used a technique as well of creating our own vibrancy mask. So we'll be making that in the tutorial along with some other image refining techniques and coming up with this final result which is beautiful and high in contrast and nice subtle colours. So let's get into it. Okay guys here we are in the Adobe Bridge interface and we're going to be looking at all these shots and putting together a shutter blend. So before we get into it You'll see that my files have a very strange file number on them, which you're probably not used to seeing, and that's because I accidentally formatted my card without realizing or without transferring my files to my external hard drive. So absolute rookie mistake, but it does happen. So I had to use the scan disk recovery software and reclaim that. So let's get into it. I've already starred the images here that I like and the reason what I've done is I've gone through and I've had a look at what water movement textures that I've, that I've liked. So when I've shot this image, I'm standing there, I've got my settings ISO 100 F13 at one second and as a big wave come in, I've just gone through and I've just gone with my shutter release and just kept my finger on it and it's gone click 1000, click 1000, click and I just get this whole range of different water movement as you can see here and I've gone through and I've just asterisked which ones I particularly like so I'm just holding down the alt key here and selecting the images I like and we're going to jump into Adobe Camera Raw to put them together so this photo was taken on the Canon 5D Mark III using the 16 to 35 mil f 2.8 lens i'm also using a lee two-stop soft grad on an 82 mil swa super wide angle adapter ring so i'm not going to get any vignetting from the filter encroaching on the field of view here come in select all synchronize our settings which is our go to. I'm going to select the image that best represents what I'm after here. I think I'm going to use that one because I like the sky. Come in and select remove chromic aberration, enable profile corrections. Open up our shadows. Again, we're going to go through the process of tonal range, contrast color. So I don't mind opening up my shadows. This is the beauty of shooting raw. Reclaim some highlights so you can see up the top left here. Obviously the sun is rising on the left here. A little bit more exposure. Bit of clarity. Bit of sharpening. Not too much. Again, sharpening is a print process, not a post-production process. We'll come in and we'll look at our hue saturation luminance. Go into our luminance here and look at the blue. Bit of a play with that, might drop that back a little bit there. And that's pretty much it. Again, I find that the time that you invest in shooting and getting your exposure histogram correct in out in the field saves you having to do so much more work back on your computer. So let's open up these shots in Photoshop and we'll put them together. Okay, so now I'm going to pick a photo that best represents globally what I'm after. So this has got a little bit more of the sun hitting it, so I'm not really probably going to go for that shot too much. I like that, I like the water movement here. 
I like that sort of movement there. I do like the water streaming in through here, but I think this image here best represents what I'm after. So I'm just going to click and stack these images. So because I clicked on that one first, I'm going to click and drag that out. Hold the shift key, click and drop. And when you hold the shift key and do this, it actually snaps the image into that into place. So over here on our layers palette on the right, let's get rid of these files. There we go. So let's look here. That's our base. I like that. And I like that. Not too sure about this one. I think it's probably a bit too busy. But what I do like is I like the water dropping off the rock ledges here. Not there. But I do like that. Again, this is what's the technique of shutter blending is you can look at a photo, you could have a nice big explosion over here. But you've got nothing coming in through here, nothing really in the foreground, but you've got a nice explosion there. Then in the next photo you think, oh, I've got the nice water here. And the next photo you've got the nice silky water coming in over the rocks here. And then your last shot is you've got other factors like the nice streaming water through here and a bit of a splash. So you can actually start building up your photo with different captures to make one fantastic shot that someone could say, oh, wow, you're so lucky to get all that happening in one shot. It's not the case. Yeah, it'd be great if you could do that. But again, when you're out shooting, it's being able to have that ability to sort of pre-visualize what your final image is going to be back on the computer screen and be able to capture those images when you're out in the field because when you're back at your computer, you can't do that, obviously. So let's go through again. Okay, I like that. So again, we're going to hold down the Alt key, click on that image, and I'm going to put in a black mask, B for my brush tool, set my opacity low. It's going to go about 90%, and let's just see. I'm going to paint. White. And a black mask. And we're just going to see if we can just... Fog that in a little bit. Toggle around between your white and black just to remove and add it in. I'm going to go for my brush tool again. And just, just change my opacity from 90 to 40 just to paint that in. Before, after, probably a little bit Funny up the top there, so I just might just fog that out a little bit there. And there we go. That's just that one image. That's all that image is there for is that. Okay, let's go to the next one. Next one here. I like that. What do I like out of this one? I do like all the foreground here. So we're gonna again we're gonna click and put a black mask over it. B for our brush tool, open it up. Let's have another look. I'm going to hold down my shift key now and click on the mask so I can see what we're doing here. Painting at 40%. Let's increase that up to 60. Painting white. Let's paint black. White on a black mask. Get rid of some of that splash there. Okay. There we go. Now we're sort of lost up here a little bit. So let's get that back. We're going to change our mask to black. And then we're just going to add that back in slowly. Again, this is all about how masks rule over the other. Up the top again, okay. Now this is going to be our main water blast through here. Hold down the Alt key, click black mask. White foreground color. Open it up. Painting it about, let's just paint about 80%. Okay, let's drop it back down. About 35 and let's just ghost some of this in. Don't like what it did just there, so we're going to come back out. 
60%. And this is just a, again a game of trial and error. Just trying to get it correct so we can get our image to look how we want. So that's before, now that's after. So I think that looks pretty good. You know, again, I don't think that water on there really adds too much. I think it's better without it. So we're going to dump that layer. Now we've just got these two layers. Let's have a look. I think now that we've got rid of that water there, we can be a little bit, a little bit harder on removing that. Getting some of these nice rocks to reveal. There we go. So I did like the sky in one of these shots. There it is there. So we're going to use the sky in this as well. I'm going to use that at 100%. I'm just going to paint that in. Nice and easy. Again, it's nothing too complicated. We're not really doing too much with the luminosity side of things, so I can just quite liberally just paint over our headland here because there's no real difference in exposure. It's merely mostly the shutter blend in the foreground. Okay, so that's pretty much it there. Now we're going to merge all our visible layers into the top layer. We're going to come in and we've done our tonal range. Maybe we could brighten it up a little bit. All right, let's see. Let's let's do that. We're going to come in. We're going to get a curves adjustment layer. We're going to come in image, apply image. Okay. And there's our mask. But our mask is being applied to our highlights. So we're going to invert that, command I comes in for our shadows and then if we start to lift our shadows we're getting a bit more of that refinement we can click on the mask here go command L for levels white will reveal black will conceal so we can refine our mask down even further Click OK, come back in, and you'll see that the histogram is even more refined. So because we're doing our tonal range first, then we'll do contrast, and contrast is going to slightly darken the image anyway. So let's, we won't worry too much about making it, the shadows a little bit too, much, too bright, but the only thing you want to be cautious of is that you don't want to start to add artifacts into your image. So that's done. We're going to come in, filter, oh, click off that, come in, filter, Nick Collection, Color Effects Pro 4. Here we are. Let's put it on. Let's put on a good, a good bit of contrast here. Okay, click OK. Again, if we find it too much, we can always use our mask to mask out what we do and what we don't want in this effect. There we go. I think it's nice, it's given us a nice bit of pop to the whole image. Now we're going to come through and we can start to do some of our colour. So we're going to click on the top layer, we're going to convert and merge all the top layers into the top. Into the top. Command Option Shift E is going to do that for us. And now we're going to come into Filter, Other, HSB, HSL, Input Mode RGB, Row Order, HSB. If you don't know about 
installing the HSB HSL plugin, there will be a link below that will direct you to that tutorial and also the Adobe website for that. Come in, select channels, I'm going to select our green channel, I'm going to load in the selection, and then we're going to save that, and that is going to become our saturation mask. We're going to deselect. Click on that Alpha 1 channel, drag it to create a new layer. Now with this layer here, we're going to invert that, Command I, and now this is going to be our saturation, uh, vibrancy mask, sorry. So we're going to load that in, click on layers, deselect this layer, or delete it. Come in with our hue saturation adjustment layer, and there it is. That is our vibrancy mask. Now on that vibrancy mask, we can now apply our color and dial color into this shot. So there we are there. So now this is what we started with. Just holding down the Alt key, clicking on the eyeball on the bottom layer. This is what we've got now. So our shot's really starting to take place. Now it comes to a bit of fine tuning and we're going to do some contrast adjustments, curves. Now with curves is you can apply, I apply it globally looking at certain areas that I want to target. So I'm looking around the rocks here and also the rocks in the foreground. Command I to invert that mask and hide it. B for your brush tool. Close your brackets down. Painting opacity to 100%. Let's just drop that down to about 80. Painting white on a black mask so white's going to reveal. And you just paint where you want the effect. This is one of those sort of things that you just go through and you fine tune and you fine tune and you fine tune it. Purely comes down to personal taste. So you come in and do another mask or another curve layer. I like what it did over there. So I might as well use the same mask. Just to pick up some of the colors in there in the water. Did it do much in the water there? Mm, too much. I like what it did through here, but certainly not at 80%. Let's drop it back down to about 40. Open up our brush. Pick that up a little bit through here. A little bit much over there, so we'll just go back. Okay, we'll come in and we'll do another curve. Bring it back. I like that for the foreground here. So again, Command I to invert it. B for your brush tool. So you can sort of see the sort of process that you, that you go through. My opacity is a bit low, and I'll pump that back up to about 70, 80 percent. Just come in, paint it in again. We paint through there. Headland could do with a little bit. Okay, so now we come in and do some other little minor adjustments. Selective color in the reds, grab the black slider. I like what it's doing, especially down in the rocks here. Play with our cyan there and just sort of make it look like it's just starting to get kissed with this, the rising sun a little bit more. Our yellow is going to do that as well. So you can see, see the adjustment in there. Pull it back a bit. Yep, with the yellow and probably a little bit too much. Got to be very careful with this. There we go. Let's grab our whites. Now, our whites are going to close down over here and up through here, I'm guessing. Yep. 
So now if I do my whites, I do like the white, but I don't have to mask it out. So I'm going to do the whites on a different layer. Let's go into your blues. Magenta, obviously it's going to pick up a few tints in the sky here. Not too much. So I'm going to go selective color again. And now I'm going to go and use it just for the whites. Pull it back down. But now I'm going to come in, Command I, and I'm going to paint it in. That's why I've decided to do it on a separate mask. At 70%, we can just come through and just, and just add it in where appropriate. Okay, so from here, let's do some local area contrast. Command, Option, Shift, E. Merge everything into the top layer. Filter, Sharp and Unsharp Mask. And we're going to do the opposites. It's probably a bit hard to see, probably because in the video, but this does do a really nice local area contrast effect to your image. Gives it a nice bit of refining of the detail just through contrast. It'll do nicely. Now maybe a little bit of a global adjustment in curves. And there we go. I'll hold down my Alt key. Before, after, before, after. So as you can see, guys, let's run it. Let's run through it. Let's run through it all. We first blended our photo together. We then did curves. And our curve just brightened it up a little bit. We then made our initial color through a vibrancy mask. We then went in with curves to do a few global adjustments which we then refined with a mask. Again, more refinement with a mask and a curve layer. Selective color, selective color for the whites. Unsharp mask using a local area contrast. Just a little bit of a curve adjustment to give it a little bit more pop and we're done. So from the whole scheme of things, it's not about how many layers you have when you edit. It's about editing in a smart manner. You know, if, you, if I did all this with only four, four layers, then I've got no ability to go back and go, you know what, that, that just didn't work. And I can go back and I can delete it out of my workflow and then re-add it in. But if I've added it all in one section, then you've, you've just, you can, instead of going back five minutes, you might go back 10 minutes in editing. So if you look on the right here on the layers palette, you know, there's going to be some people out there who go, oh, you, you photoshopped your image so hard or look how much, how much work's gone into that. It hasn't really. Like what I've done there on the right would take me maximum five minutes to do if I wasn't sitting here explaining the process and the steps going through. So I really like how this has come together. It's not a crazy looking photo. It's got no big massive bold colors, but with some good technique, some contrast, color, it's really come together nicely with some good blending as well. So I hope you like it just as much as I do. Give it a thumbs up. Pop a comment below if you've got any. Subscribe to the channel or head on over to rubbingpixels.com where you're gonna find out a lot more video tutorials and articles to help you learn to shoot, edit, and sell your photos like a pro.